we're back with more Gary Brecca. Let's see what old Gare has to say today. Vegetables are poison. I mean, they have lectins. They have all kinds of mechanisms in them to protect themselves from predators just like, yeah, just like we do. Um, and a lot of these are gut destroying, um, you know. Uh, We're off to a Paul Saladino start. Peanuts, for example, which aren't really nuts. They're seeds or legumes are full of mycotoxins and, and lectins. A lot of uh, vegetables have high amounts of lectins, which are like... The, so do you eat special. vegetables? I eat very little vegetables. I eat asparagus, Brussels. So hold on. You just said all this stuff, bad stuff that vegetables do, but you do eat some vegetables. The irony, the absolute irony. Sprouts, um, I'll eat uh, uh, heads of broccoli and I eat them raw. Okay. Those are my go-to. But fruit's fine. Um, fruits are fine. I prefer fruits that end in berry. Um, blackberry, raspberry, blueberry, strawberry, yeah. the lowest on the glycemic index. But remember, fruits, especially if you're going to spend money anywhere on organic nutrients, you want to spend money on organic fruits. Okay. Because fruits absorb nutrients through. Organic is means nothing. They still use pesticides. They just are organic pesticides. So you still have to wash your fruit. And sometimes it can allow other things to get into the um, soil or into the actual fruit itself. Organic is, doesn't make it better. It's through their skin. There was actually a recent um, publication that I read about um, inorganic strawberries where they actually took inorganic strawberries right out of the supermarket. They pressed them and pulled the juice out of them. There was enough pesticide left over in the juice that they actually pressed out of the strawberry, an organic strawberry, to respray the crop. Shut pesticide. up. Uh. So first off, cite the cite the study, okay? Cite the study you're talking about um, so we can actually read it. But anyways, so he says that fruits and vegetables are poison. Well, this might be actually maybe mislabeled because he says organic berries are his go-to, whatever. We have... Plenty of meta-analyses that would probably say the uh, exact opposite of what old Gary's saying here. For example, in allium vegetables, which if you think allium vegetables, think of like your garlics, your onions, shall shallots, stuff like that. Stuff you're probably um, mixing in with your foods, but maybe not eating directly by themselves like broccoli, for instance. Uh, maybe onions, but what they found in this study which was an actually an umbrella review, which is a review of statistical uh, or not statistical. Um, an umbrella review is actually a review of meta-analyses and, syst er, and systematic reviews. Allium vegetables actually showed to be beneficial for cancer prevention. They found in diabetic patients even with longer durations of garlic intake experienced more benefits in terms of fasting, uh, blood glucose, HbA1c, uh, and serum fructosamine, than healthy participants. And garlic intake was associated with blood pressure reduction in hypertensive patients, but not in normal tensive participants. Limited side effects of garlic, such as garlic odor and GI complaints, were reported among the included meta-analyses. Our results suggest that all allium vegetables might be beneficial for cancer prevention. In another study um, that looked at broccoli consumption and the effect on the human GI microbiota, single-blind, randomized, crossover design, um, complete feeding intervention, so this is an RCT. Uh, they had 18 participants, uh, 10 females, and I believe eight males. Uh, there were two complete feeding diet treatment periods. Breakfast and dinner were consumed on site to observe compliance. Uh, they were randomly allocated to one of two groups, broccoli period first or control period first. And they had fecal samples collected. And what they found, so participants were fed at, the, at weight maintenance with the intervention period diet, including 200 grams of of cooked broccoli and 20 grams of raw daikon radish per day. Uh, furthermore, the effects were strongest among participants in a BMI less than 26 kilograms per meter squared. And within the group were, uh, there were associations between bacterial relative abundance and glucosinolate metabolites. Functional prediction revealed that broccoli consumption increased the pathways involved in the functions of the endocrine system, transport, and catabolism and energy metabolism. Broccoli consumption affects the composition and function of the human GI microbiota. With a caveat, we don't know a whole lot about the microbiota right now um, in terms of when we have changes, we don't know if those changes are neutral, positive, or negative. 
Um, but we can look, what we can look at is other outcomes um, associated with the GI. And I'm going to uh, link all of these studies in the description so you can go read them yourselves. So in this meta-analysis, they have a table here that shows uh, the different nutrients, their level of evidence, um, their relative risk, and their proposed mechanism. So some of the convincing evidence that we have is fiber, increased stool weight, decreased transit time, dilution of colonic carcinogenic content, decreased adiposity, and anti-cancer properties of short-chain fatty acids produced by bacterial fermentation of resistant starch. Where do we find a lot of fiber? Vegetables and fruits. Some other convincing evidence we have is red and processed meat, which shouldn't be a shock. Carcinogenic, carcinogenic effect of heme iron and nitro compounds and heterocyclic amines generated during cooking at high temperature. Proneoplastic effect of increased adiposity and insulin. That's not saying that you can't eat red meat. It means limit your red meat and making sure that you're not charring your meats. All right. And then whole grains, which not really what, what he's talking about, but it is interesting. The whole grains they found was convincing evidence for anti-cancer properties of fiber again, antioxidants and phytochemicals. What else has phytochemicals? Vegetables. Based on this meta-analysis, the direct effects on immune responsiveness, inflammation, and the indirect effects of overnutrition and obesity, risk factors for colorectal cancer. Emerging evidence also indicates the gut microbiota as an important effector in the relationship between diet and cancer. Dietary modification, therefore, has the promise of reducing colorectal cancer incidence. Adding more fiber to your diet, more phytochemicals, less red meat, less processed meat. And speaking of phytochemicals, here's a 2020 study about phytochemicals and GI cancer, cellular mechanisms and effects to change cancer, cancer, cancer progression. So this study actually found that potentially using phytochemicals in the diet may help with cancer treatments, uh, specifically to uh, for the GI tract. Phytochemicals found in fruits and vegetables have multiple beneficial effects on GI cancer. A diet rich in phytochemicals could improve the prognosis of GI cancer. Generally, the combination of phytochemicals could enhance anti-cancer effects by triggering multiple mechanisms, but more research is needed to support this promising means of enhancing cancer prognosis and possibly prevention. Okay. And we also have, there's also some meta-analyses, uh, one on the association of dietary fiber, fruit and vegetable consumption with risk of IBS. Um, a systematic review and meta-analysis. Um, I'll link all of these so you guys can go through them. But I said this in the last Gary Brecca video I did. He has no idea what he's talking about. He's possibly harming people by telling them that vegetables are poisonous, fruits are poisonous, only eat organic organic fruits that are end in berry. And look, I'm not against berry. I think that's actually great. Um, a great recommendation. More people need to eat berries because they have a lot of ant um, antioxidants um, and a lot of vitamin and minerals that you're missing from your diet diets, like vitamin E and vitamin K, which are hard to get. My biggest problem is in the very beginning, him saying that vegetables are poison. And then he says, oh, but I eat some vegetables, but only these certain vegetables. It's either the vegetables are poisonous or they're not. Okay. So you got to pick a lane and stay in that lane. And he's taken up, he's taken a page out of the Paul Saladino playbook that vegetables are trying to protect themselves and kill you essentially is what he's saying, which is not true because the overarching evidence says that more people that eat diets higher in fruits and vegetables and maintain their calories or in a calorie deficit have better health outcomes and decreased all cause mortality. And on top of that, people that eat higher diets in fiber or higher fiber diets. I don't know if I said that correctly, which you will get when you have diets that are higher in fruits and vegetables, namely cruciferous vegetables like leafy, broccoli, bok choy, um, stuff like that. Please stop listening to Gary Brecca. He doesn't know what he's talking about. We'll see you in the next one.